Hello and welcome to this quick video of using Hair Strand Designer. Now what this is, is a little package I've created for making hair strands because I had some issues creating hair with the, the Hair and Fur plugin in Max. Uh, just when I was rendering out I was getting some sampling issues, uh, little defects here and there. And it was just overall I just wasn't happy with it. So I've created this little editor that um, creates an RGB texture out of um, some just some like little calculations for waviness and your number of strands. You press enter each time to regenerate. Uh, so it's not running in real time. It takes a little bit to generate the hairs, but once you've done that, you can end up with some pretty nice strand sets. Now we can create some set distancing like this. and it will kind of compact them up a little bit. I'm just going to reduce the number of strands so that's faster for now. Okay, uh, once you do that you see that these numbers don't line up precisely with these, don't worry about that. That will be fixed in a different version but I'm just going to increase the number of strands and in theory I'll end up with more sets. Um, Yeah, maybe not at the minute. So you can change this uh, distancing here to change the distance between the strands. And you can see you get these larger areas covered. Um, and this is quite nice because I've managed to break this up into little sub areas. Uh, I'll create, create a set distance just to fill up the texture. Okay, there we go, we got a couple of strands there, got a, double, a few strands here. I'm just going to do the, choose the diminish so that I get a small number. So there's seven sets, and those eight sets get generated, zero to seven. And there we go, I've got a whole bunch of stragglers, so I could always put my hair cards over these. Um, you know, to separate them out. There's one that I could put the hair card over there. I can even shift this about in Photoshop later, but just change the distancing up a little bit and maybe reduce the number of strands. Okay, so if you press spacebar, you'll see the normal map. So it generates a little normal map for each strand as well. And in a future version of this, I'm going to change how the uh, the normal map looks, so you can add your own little normal map. You might want it to be more rounded, but this this does the job. Okay, so we've got good variation. You might want to bring in more waviness. And this minimum and maximum scale. Don't worry about that. That's just the smallest size it will be at the tip, uh, the root in the tip. But I think they are kind of fine the way they are. There we go, there's a nice couple of uh, straggler hairs. I'm going to go for another one. I want to try and get a bit of distance between these. Yeah, so I've got a single one I can get. And I suppose I could get that single one as well. They're very similar. But you can see the, the root tip colour is a bit different with them. So that's handy. Now once you've done this, you just press S to save them out. And I'm just going to save that one. Just over right. And then it's going to ask me for the normal map as well. Okay. Okay, so that's that's pretty much them saved. Now I should be able to open them up in Photoshop. I had a little bit of trouble with this earlier, but hopefully, hopefully it's good to go. So here's stuff. Uh, here's trying to say no here sets. So I'll get rid of these two and open these. 
Okay, so what it generates is your normal map and the corresponding VRTC map. Now it's got the alpha already in it, but we want to extract it. So I'm just going to go to uh, layer and layer mask from transparency. So now I've got this separated. I'm just going to like control A, control X, and then do a new layer and paste that in there. Then I'm going to invert it and levels adjust it up just to get it strong enough to work correctly. Uh, it's just the software I'm using isn't spitting out a strong enough uh, alpha. So I can increase this quite a good bit higher. And I also like to use the oil paint filter. So if you go to stylize oil paint, and I've just put everything down to like two, two or three usually works. And you can already see the effect that's having. So as soon as I do that, it cleans it up a bit. Just just enough. Okay, and I'm gonna do the same with this, but I'm gonna get rid of this mask now. Now I've got the pure colour. Now I quite like this the way it is because it's got all these little kind of bumps in it, and that was quite intentional. What I've done is just varied the the hue a little bit as it creates this, that way you get a little bit of the colours getting shared between them. Uh, each channel, so the red channel, the dark areas will become, you know, one side and the light areas on the other side, so you can get colour tonal variations if you assign these two colours to each of these, and that's done through one of my shaders uh, using this method. So the green channel, as you can see, is just the root, and the blue channel is the tip. Like so, and you can always boost these up a bit. So I'm gonna just like levels adjust that one, and then levels adjust this. Now I'm gonna give full control of these kind of things in the future update to the hair strand designer. It's a very early version. I'm calling it beta. It's probably actually alpha. Um, but you can see now that uh, some of these are. You know, a bit different, going a bit further, letting some kind of light. You might want to like take the red channel, so make a copy of it. This is just in case you want more. So take that, right? And then I'm gonna levels adjust it. And then do a little gradient over it, black and white. And then if I change that actually to multiply. basically asking for more right so now I'll go back into this green copy that and then I'll change this to screen and that's just adding in a little bit more to my root and also giving a little bit of variation so I'm just going to merge them down I'm going to cu cut that out and paste it back into the green channel there I have to be on this layer. Okay, so I've just asked for a bit more root, that's all. But I'll create that control later. So we've got our opacity um, and we've got the RGB, right? So I'm just going to save. See if this out is BRT, BRT RGB here, set one, right? So I've gave it a different name. So I know I'm finalizing it and this one as well and that will be the, the cut out not the here set one okay and then I just want to go into the normal map I'm just going to copy it and paste it here so everything's in the one document and I'm also going to do the oil paint on that just to get rid of you see it gets rid of the harsh pixels you can do it a couple of times and it would just you know gets rid of some of the noise yeah, you don't really have to do it uh, another thing I like to do is let's just copy it and paste it and then just hide my other channels my other layers just hide those and I use the plugin script called combine normals you can find it on uh, polycount um, and this just lets me like increase the detail so I usually just make one like 
100 and 150 so it's basically adding a, an extra boost you can see it just strengthened those a bit more okay so that's good to go I'm just going to save that as the da, da, da. We'll call that norm okay, okay and that's all good to go and then I can save this as some kind of master right so here sets let me just see what I called that here set one yeah Photoshop So that's pretty much the workflow there for using this and you know you know the rest of the process I'm sure you just apply this to your alpha alpha cutout you can come in and edit this more if you want to um, you can see that sometimes it's a little bit dark in there so I'm just going to increase the strength of that like so and save that out again cut out here set one okay um cool and if you want this to be a little bit more kind of blurred because of the dark edge then just create a copy of that change it to blur uh, create a blur on it just a small blur like i don't know four pixels worth right and then you can change this to screen or uh add Bear in mind, it's going to make everything a little bit brighter. Um, merge that down. And if I do like multiply with this, I can see kind of what I'm going to get if I change this. If I not multiply, if I take this and put it into the mask, I can preview. Result. I just need a solid background. Okay, that's not too bad. Some levels on it. Okay, I'm just speeding up the end of the video here just to wrap things up. I've supplied this little tool with the Unreal and Unity hair shaders that I've created and you can get those on my Itch or Gumroad stores. I think I've also put them on ArtStation and if you've bought this shader pack through Unreal Engine or Unity Asset Store then get in touch and I'll supply this for you. Thanks very much for watching. Bye!